I want to title this one, The Valley of Vision, and uh, I want to look at some scriptures that I think probably most of us are kind of, or pretty much familiar with, and maybe maybe take a new angle at this, and um, I try to hear from the Lord on a different level, and uh, we're going to be in Ezekiel 37, <clears throat> so if you do have your Bibles, you can turn there with me. And, uh, and, of course, as usual, if you don't, um, I'll read the scriptures anyway. Ezekiel 37, first verse 1 through 8. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. He set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And we're calling this the Valley of Vision. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were many, very many in the open field. And lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Um, thou knowest. And then verse 4, again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put my breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, and there was no breath in them. Now, verse, uh, starting verse 10 through 14. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off for our part. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. You shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. All right, so uh, verse 1 and 2 starts us off with the hand of the Lord being upon me, upon Ezekiel, carrying me, the hand of the Lord upon me, carrying me out in the Spirit, carrying me out in the Spirit, and then setting me down in the midst of the valley, this valley of bones, this what I call valley of vision and um, God's the one who brought him there God's the one who took him there he didn't just find his way there God brought him there the hand of God the Spirit of God and the movement of God brought him there and the Lord has to bring us to that reality the valley of vision he has to take us there also there's something that he wants us to see there's something that's on his heart that he wants us to see and we have to begin by seeing that we are dry bones we have to see our dryness we have to see not our great spiritual depth or our great knowledge but we have to see our death we have to see our dryness and then 
we begin to realize there's hope. So I'm going to just go to another scripture real quick, and then we'll be back here. So maybe you don't have to flip to this one. And it's the only one that I'll be going to apart from the ones that we're looking at in Ezekiel. Uh, just so that you know what it is, it's Joel chapter 3, verse 14 through 16. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord shall also roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So God has to bring us to the hope that he has, the, 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 the valley that he has that's going to bring us hope. He has to bring us to that. And it is a valley. It's not a mountaintop experience. It's not like um, the Mount of Transfiguration. It's a valley, and we usually talk about being down in the valley, meaning more depressed and up high, more happy, but he brings us to this valley. And, um, and if we can see it, and if we can see, we will see the valley as a valley of vision, and we will catch his vision of what he has in mind. So verse 3 says this, And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live and I answered O Lord God or O Lord God thou knowest um, can they uh, can we see uh, can we have vision so that it is possible that that these dry bones can live um, so the dry bones the dry bones are the people of God in his death or without his death the question about these dry bones is can they be found in his death or will they just be found in their own death and there is no there is no resurrection there is no life out of any other death than his death and that's why there has to be a vision of that death. That's why the Spirit of God has to be on you. That's why the hand of God has to be on you. It's not fooling around and reading someone's book or hearing a sermon. It is God himself taking you from where you were to where he has vision for you. And it's not a pretty sight to begin with, but it's the valley of hope. And, and that's what it said um, there in Hosea. But the Lord will be the hope of his people. Praise God. So, can they, can they live? Well, in the vision, in the, the vi not just seeing the bones, but in the vision of the valley, we have to see Christ being our death. We have to see him bearing, bearing our dryness. We look, and when we see these dry bones strewn everywhere, we see Christ crucified. We see him dead. We see him poured out. And, the, the, uh, in dryness and uh, I even wrote down this statement in the valley we see him him hemmed in by a people of sin in other words all these dry bones and all of this represents our death and our our sin and all that brought us to death and he's in that hemmed in in that valley by us and all of the all of our wrong and all of our our things that are so not him and so in verse uh, four it, it starts talking about prophesy speak the word of the cross speak speak the word of the cross not just the word of oh god's prophesying that you're going to live uh, without the cross and that he loves you and all that. No, speak the word of the cross and these bones are going to come alive. So, um, verse 4, again he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, that's death without him, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Um, and so, 
the next two verses, what is the word that he says? What is that word that he says? Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you. To enter into you. To enter into you. And you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with, and I've added a, one word here several times, and cover you with my skin and put my breath in you and you shall live by my life and you shall know that I am the Lord. I hear the new covenant. I, I hear the new covenant in this. Put, put my life, my breath in you. Uh, make you my body. Put my skin, my flesh. You are bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh here. Okay, so I want to talk about the two things that we're seeing here. One is the act of death, which is Jesus giving himself in death that he might have us. And the, the word of oneness. The act of death along with the word of oneness. All right, so Jesus is the one who carried out the act of death. Jesus is the one who went down into death and, and was hemmed in by our sin and by our, our wrong and by us, the, the, the failures uh, that failed getting with God. And so uh, he is the one who carries forth that act. But we're the ones, we are the ones that have to respond to the word of oneness. Oneness in death, oneness in burial, oneness in resurrection. But our focus is not on death and burial and resurrection, but on being one with Christ in those things. All right, so... Um, we're only skipping verse 9, and we're going to go to verse 10. We want to talk about his body, his army. His body, his army. And uh, uh, verse 10, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army, an exceeding great army. Okay. This army overcomes. It's an army. It, it overcomes. But we find out, and well, there was one other scripture. I'll read uh, Revelation 12, 9 through 11. And the great, the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth. And his angels, the fallen angels, were cast out with him into the earth. And, and there's shouting, you know, there's shouting, but let's comprehend why. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. But the, he's cast down into the earth. They're rejoicing that he ain't in heaven anymore, but he's in the earth. So why are we saying the kingdom has come and the strength and salvation and power? Because it's not in the fact that he was kicked out of heaven. It's in the fact of the next verse. They, he was cast down and his demons cast down into the earth. And, where is, and they overcame him by the blood that poured out slaughtered blood of the lamb. And by the word of of their martyrdom. That's the actual word there in the Greek. The word of their martyrdom. And they love not their lives unto the death. That's this army. This is this army. They are armed with the Lamb's nature and spirit. They're armed with being his bones and with being his flesh and being his breath and being one with him. The word of oneness causes oneness. And oneness overcomes by his spirit and by his nature, by his fullness. So verse 11, and this is, this is the problem. We see ourselves wrong and we say it all the time. 
Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, this is what they say. This is after his sinews and all of this has taken place. And they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost and we are cut off for our part. They see the valley as defeat. They see the they see the valley of dry bones. They don't see the vision, the valley of vision. They see it just as them being without hope and never agree with what is done. Never agree with the, the Lord. Never agree with the work of the Lord. Never agree with the heart of the Lord. Never take up the, the word of oneness and say, this is mine and I will hold on to it and I will speak it and I will speak it to others and I will write it and I will embrace it. So verse 12 and 13, Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up. I will open graves and cause to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. He's, he's screaming, don't be afraid of death. I want to preserve my life. I want to preserve this special thing. I don't want the Lord to take that. I want this and that, all, all this stuff. You're afraid of death when he's going to open your graves. He said it. He promised it. It's in, it's in there. And I wrote, you are the body that passes through death. But know this, only his body passes through death. You can't be your body. You have to be the body of the beloved to the Father. And you are the army that passes through death. And then finally, verse 14. And shall put my spirit in you and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live it didn't say you'll and you'll be a Christian and then you can be good and go to church and read a book and do this and think that that's what it's about he wants us to live but live by his spirit and nature and life and I shall place in you, I shall place you in, I shall place you in your own land, the one that he has for you. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Put my spirit in you. You shall live. I shall place you in. Then you'll know. I have spoken. I will perform. And that's just powerful if you receive it as the word of God. If it's just a ink on white paper called, called a Bible, that has no power. But it has all the power in the world if you receive his heart. So I wrote this, do not run from the valley seeking the mountaintop. Stop sink it, seeking where he doesn't want you to be. And you wonder why you can't, you know, it's like if, it's, if the glory is falling right here, just in this space right here that I'm signifying, and you're over there crying out for the glory, and you go, where is it? Well, get where he said. And he says in the valley, he says, be crucified with me. Not up on the mountaintop having fun and enjoying everything. Do not run from the place of vision. Do not run from the valley of decision. Because it is. Many, many are in the valley of decision. They have not made the decision yet. They haven't given their heart over yet. 
haven't made the decision. Do not run from the place of dryness. Because you have to be the you have to be the as it were the dead body of Jesus. You you are crucified with him, put to death, buried as dry bones, and raised up as his living body. Do not run from the place of death. Because life cannot come until you accept death with him. Not all the classes in the world can't do it. All the prayers in the world can't do it. <laughs> there just has to be a surrender. I surrender to your death and therefore to your life. The hand of the Lord has to be upon you or you'll say those words and nothing will happen. The, his spirit has to be upon you to carry you and set you down in the valley of vision for you to see it and you will rejoice you'll rejoice in the lowly thing instead of the great thing father just continue to pour forth of your spirit lord we want we do want your hand upon us but not for the things we usually pray for but for the things that where you want to carry us so, Father, quicken faith in us to not only not run from that, but to run to it. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Love you. Appreciate your hearts. Appreciate your continued desire for Jesus. And I'm with you. I'm with you. My heart is longing for Jesus and longing for us to just go out with all of our might after him. And I'm thankful that we're all in this together. Bless you. Love you.